I want you to remember today, the word, we all know the word is the Bible. That, that, that's the word. The, the spirit here is the Holy Ghost. And they together will awake your soul up. Think about the word of God, something that the enemy don't want us to hear is the word of God. Have, have, you, have you noticed? Have you noticed? Right now, in the efforts of trying to preach here, right now, somebody we got sleep. Right now, right now. Slept eight hours last night, but right now, in the efforts of preaching, look like the devil don't want us to hear the word of God. I'm talking about saved folks now. I'm not talking about unsaved. I'm talking about people that's been born again. Now, 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 now. I didn't set up the preaching and Devil mess with me sometimes. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Right. But thanks be to God for the Holy Ghost. See, the Holy Ghost will it, 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 it'll shake you. When, when you're in the church of the living God, it will shake you and, and, and tell your soul, listen, listen. A cardinal slumbers will cry for peace. Peace to themselves where there is no peace. For God had said, there is no peace to the wicked. That's what the Lord said in, 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 in Isaiah 48, 8, 22. It, it reads, it says, there is no peace, said the Lord, unto the wicked. The cardinal slumbers live on day after day trying to keep death, judgment, and eternal thoughts out of their mind. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm talking about cardinal slumbers. They, 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 they never read the Bible. They never listen to the preached word of God. When the word is being preached. If we don't watch ourselves, Satan try to put us on the stage of being a cardinal slumber type of person. Our minds will wander off and we start thinking about, I wonder how my dinner tastes when I, <laughs> or who's playing what game today. They never listen to godless song. Godless slumbers can sing godless song, but never listen to the message in the godly song. They never have a desire to know what their state is. And never, uh, never praying to God Almighty from the bottom of their heart. It's just a, just a ritual thing. Just, just, mm -hmm. just doing it. But never from the heart. Never saying while the blood is running warm in their veins, God, be merciful to me a sinner. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm talking about godly slumbers. Uh, Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 13, it, it, it says, these words and the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Yeah. Yet that's how he perceived himself before God. He said, I'm not even worthy to look up to heaven. So he beat on his breast or his chest and he asked God, he said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. In other words, I, 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 I'm not worthy, God. I, I, I need you. I can't look up like I'm all that. So I need you. I want you to be merciful to me, a sinner. All right, all right. How can a person live? My question is, Without praying to God for mercy. Did you hear what I said? I, 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 when, when we deal with ourselves, we ought to be able to pray to God for mercy. Not so much just on our brothers and sisters, but we ought to ask God to have mercy on us. How can a person live in this mean Old world without Christ. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder, have you ever wondered about that even before we got 
I'm saying. You can't tell me that you really was happy without Christ. Well, if it was, why did you use so many substitute things? And we're not going to name them today because we're trying to get on out of here. We're not going to mess with the old man before the old man got converted. All right. No, we're just going to leave the old man. But we weren't happy, I'll say that. Nope. By, by living in this world without Christ, that person is given full proof that they are alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Yeah, yeah, I, I got to go back and just say something about my old man. All right. Yeah, my old man wasn't that intelligent because I was trying to live without Christ. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but if I know what I know now, I would have got saved before I was 17 years old. Matter of fact, I probably got saved time I came out of my mother's womb, if I know what I know now. Can anybody here help me with this thing and, and say I made some mistakes? Yeah, before I got saved. And, and, and I still make some now. But as time progresses, yes. we ought to be getting a little smart. Yes. So church, it, it pleased God for the Holy Ghost yes. to bring conviction on the heart of man. Uh -huh. Did you hear what I said? Let me, let, me, let me say that again. It pleases God yes. for the Holy Ghost to bring convictions on the heart of man. That, that make, ain't that strange? Ain't that strange? No. Sometimes in our flesh, we wrestle with the word of God. Yeah. Come on, help me, Red Hill. Yeah. We get upset yeah. at the messenger. Yeah. But I want you to hear me today. It pleases God yeah. to bring conviction on the heart a man. Now, 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 think about that. Think about that. Do you remember when, when, when we was growing up as, as little children, how we got corrected? Yeah. And we thought that our parents did not love us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We used to say, uh, the Bible says, spread a rod, you spoil the child. And we thought we were right, but the Bible says, spread a rod, you hate your child. So evidently, our parents found out what the word of God said. So they corrected us. I guess they knew that it, it pleases God for the Holy Ghost to bring conviction on the heart of man. And it pleased God for the Spirit to awake man's conscience. Yeah, we wrestle. And sometimes we don't want to hear what thus said the Lord. But have you ever thought about what the Spirit of God does in us? It's there to correct Reprove and rebuke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's there to God as well. And sometimes in my life, and I know I'm just not only talking to him about myself, sometimes I'm stuck. Yeah. All right, all right. Man, yeah. Oh, so I'm on one? No. You said, well, Pastor, you are. Well, you are too. <laughs> we all, you know, sometimes we do personal observations about each other, so we are oh, everybody's the same. But, 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 but the Holy Spirit, it awakes man's conscience. Yeah, yeah. Then man starts on this life journey. Yeah. Amen. Awoke out of sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now man sees after man hath woken up. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Man sees what he or she had never discovered before. I ought to have a witness here. Yes. Now we're still seeing the way we used to see. Then evidently God still need to wake us up. Right. We start discovering things that we never discovered before. We start to discover that sin is an enemy mm -hmm. and a bitter thing against God. So what we discovered is we stop practicing mm -hmm. anything that's evil and bitter against God. Uh -huh. That's why the Bible 
opposite look and say, lay aside every weight of sin that so easily to beset us and run the race with patience. But Psalms 9 and 17 says, the wicked shall be turned into hell. All right, all right. And all the nations that forget God. Did you hear that? I didn't say it. The Bible said that the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. So as I close here, have anybody in here today forgotten God? And you are being convicted right now that the wages of sin is death. Yeah, I'm talking about right now. In this short period of preaching, if the Holy Ghost is convicting you right now that the wages of sin is death, then we ought to realize that without Christ, how shall we escape the damnation of hell? Yeah, we ought to come to some type of agreement here. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but I realize that I'm not perfect, but I'm saved. But right now, if you are being convicted, meaning that if you never accepted the law, now it's hard to go to heaven when you are saved. Now, 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 because the Bible said that the righteous scarcely make it in. Is that right? Y'all quiet on me now. You're quiet on me. I knew we were going to shout today. We're still every now and then. We need to sit there and listen. Now, you think about it. If we, Pastor Hopkins, all the ministers, all the deacons, all of the saints of God, if we scarcely, that means you barely make it in. You, you, ever, you ever been in the crowd, you're trying to squeeze through somebody. Sometimes you have to wait because you can't get through. But the Bible said that the righteous scarcely make it in. That's why I don't take church for granted. That's why I don't take my worship experience for granted. Because we barely make it in. I know that's some songs that Sound good. Yeah. And every now and then we'll sing them in the church. Yeah. We'll sing songs like, I go sweeping through that city. <laughs> but I want to correct the songwriter. Right. Yeah. If y'all know him, tell him that Hopkins said that we barely make it in. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all ain't going to help me with this thing. Yeah. I know we want to wear a long white robe. I, I know we want a crown, but I know we want gold and slippers, but I come by to share with you that we barely make it in. Now you think about it. I'm talking about all of us who have. Some of y'all looking funny on your face like you don't like what I'm preaching, but God gave it to you. We get in the walk. We got baptized. The spirit of the living God is indwelling in, in us, but we still barely I don't care what title you hold, what position you hold, we got it making it. Yeah, help me, Holy Ghost. I feel something here. I, I feel the Spirit here. Listen to our scripture verse. It says, and brought them out and said, Sirs. It was two of them. Y'all know the story that was in jail for preaching God's word. Amen. It was in jail, but they had a good time in jail. All right. All right. You see, you can be in jail and, and still have a good time if you're in jail for the right reason. I'm not talking about in Yanceyville or, or Raleigh or wherever the jail cells is or in Whitworth. I'm talking about you can be in somebody else's jail. And folks can have you confined. But look at that. If you're confined, they got you confined. You need to learn to do what Paul and Silas did. Yeah. They was in jail and somebody said, look at here. We're in here for a duration of time. Yeah. But I don't care what they did to us. Let's have Bible study. Right. Let's have an anniversary. Yeah. Let's have a prayer meeting. Yeah. We've been with Jesus for a mighty long time. Yeah. He's good enough to sing about. Yeah. Somebody said, crank it up. Bring it up, you sing, and I'll pray. Yeah. Glory to God, glory to God. They got the singing and, 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 and on their first gathering, in their first uh, uh, singing together. I can imagine they got together.
son, I can, I can definitely make some money here because that's a record that you can sell mighty good. I don't know what they sung, but I know they sung a song. And the Bible says, and then they began to pray to God. You see, when you get yourself together, when you get yourself right, it don't matter about confinement. You can sing a little bit. Somebody said, uh, a song will make you feel better. You can't take a show up song and put prayer with it. Something will happen when you bring all that power together. You got to understand these people didn't have no type of training. They went taught how the same first tenor, second tenor, baritone on the bass. They just sung. Two preachers got together. And they sung to the glory of God. The Bible said something happened. It said they sung so good. Tell their song went up to glory. Tell me they prayed so good. Till their prayer went up to heaven and said that God began to react. I can feel it right now. God, when you start calling on him, when you start singing about his goodness, when you start preaching about his goodness, it said that God began to shake up stuff. Great God Almighty, look what the scripture verse says. When God shook up stuff, tell me that the doors open up. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. That's the way the church ought to be. We ought to be making so much Holy Ghost noise yeah. in God's house. Yeah. Tell the doors ought to open up yeah. in somebody else's sake. Yeah. Great God, Almighty, you know why folks ain't come to church. Let me tell you why they ain't come to church. Because we got too many people coming God's house and won't make no noise about the goodness of the Lord. You know the Lord been good to you. You ought to make a little noise. Tell me that everything opened up and all of a sudden, amen, the, 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 the guy that was in charge, the jail keeper, amen, he said he brought them out and and said, sir, right. look how you dress. Yes. God's men serve. Yes. He did not disrespect God's men. Yes. He respected God's men. Hold on, I forgot to stop right here. Because we got a whole lot of rascals talking about you on your way to heaven. But you ain't got no respect for nobody. Yes. Sir. Yes. They can hear the anointing in their voice. Yes. They can hear the power of God. In their voice. Sir, what must I do to be saved? In other words, I want some of that stuff that you got. I want some of that joy that you got. 